Oh, dude, why are you doing this to that way? That way's the man. That way's the man. Um, yeah, I, I, I do like that way. It's kind of. It's kind of sad to see him like being so hit by it and being very emotional about it. Uh, yeah, that's rough, dude. <laughs> Subscribe, please. All right, so uh, let's have a look. These I need to up the sound, I think. So this is, as I was saying, this is that way's video. It's a, it's an interview. Uh, that he did, he took the stage to kind of give his thoughts to talk about the past and the future for Genshin Impact, I believe. Um, so yeah, uh, I want to have a look at that, uh, see what he has to say. Honestly, I think the 5.0 live stream was actually pretty good. I think it was pretty good. They 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 talked about a lot of things. They didn't dilly dally too much. They announced a lot of quality of life, lots of new features, and I think overall it was a big W, not gonna lie. So anyway, let's see what he has to say. The sound is too low. All right, he says, I already, uh, I've already talked about everything I want to talk to travelers about at the end of the preview program for version 5.0. This is Google translated, so don't expect like the insane quality, but we'll probably understand what he's trying to say either way. That's a Genshin Impact music. It looks very emotional. He did mention, like during the um, during the interview, he did mention that he was actually him and the Genshin team were very confused about the feedback and the reaction that the community had. And some of the uh, some of the, the 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 backlash that happened, which is uh, understandable, you know, different cultures, stuff like that. It's uh, it can be confusing. Do you see this already? I haven't. For the past year, what did you say? For the past year, the Genshin Impact anxiety and hesitation. Yeah. Tough time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very harsh voices. Uh, yeah, he also mentioned that, uh, you know, he went to different places, different countries, to cons and stuff like that. He mentioned, like, some places in uh, uh, China. He also mentioned Sao Paulo, I think. Um, it was listening to just, like, what people want to say, what people thought about the game and stuff like that. It ranged from everything. Nothing good about Genshin. And the Genshin development management team. I think a lot of people have a lot of ritual toward Genshin Impact. I think it's not a bad game, but like a lot of people are kind of fed up with it. And um, the problem, especially on the internet and like just three people in general, is that this this only extreme. It's never it, there's never nuance, and I think that can be very very harsh. <laughs> Oh, dude, why are you doing this to that way? That way's the man. That way's the man. Um, yeah, I, I, I do like that way. It's kind of, it's kind of sad to see him like being so hit by it and being very emotional about it. Uh, yeah, that's rough, dude. I mean, I'm gonna say I'm not here being like, don't. I'm gonna protect my multi-billion company. This is not what I'm saying. It's just like that way. As an individual, I think is very enduring, and 
yes, the company as a whole, yes, they're greedy, they're doing this for money, obviously, but it doesn't change the fact that, like, some people in there are real people and they, they get hurt. <laughs> it just makes sense, right? Gage is a fun game, I don't like the combat, I think the committee can be super toxic, but you can tell the hard work put into the story, which I liked, and the world is gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely true. I, I agree with that. They'll be arrogant and don't listen to everyone's opinion. And GG, a colleague who participated in the live broadcast, said we are like all... We also feel what the players, travelers, and travelers are. We feel it too, just for us. Yeah, it's not going to translate, but we understand what you're saying. Essentially, he's saying that he, he listens to us and he understands what the, the team, the, what the people are feeling, and they can feel it too, and all of that is causing a lot of uh, stress, anxiety. Um, um, but there's like there's so much feedback that it, keep, it becomes overwhelming, and they need to like you know calm down and and. Uh, because it's like it's it's just overwhelming right yeah there it is we must discern which voices are truly from travelers um i, I cannot agree with this statement um because I, I think the problem in a lot of cases is that there's so many people talking there's so many people like giving their opinion and let's be real a lot of people that shit on the game don't play the game that's what it is. A lot of people do. Um, and uh, I think it's important to realize what is actual constructive criticism. And also, if you only pander to people, like if you only pander to a small minority that play the game, you're going to end up with a worse experience. At the end of the day, developers are the one that knows what they're doing. Obviously, sometimes they can err. Sometimes they can like make mistakes. But players, they don't, necessarily what's, they don't necessarily know what's good for the game. Go back to a root? Okay. Wait, they started the Genshin project in 2019? It took them a year to release it? No, surely it means like starting the production. I assume they started the production of the game in 2019, but beforehand they were already working on it, surely. There's no way they released 1.0 in a single year. You can just fire things to listen to the voice of many travelers. When we were wondering how to move forward into the future, we decided to talk with the members of the Genshin team. It started in 2017, okay. So I, I assume it's like really like ramping up the, the, the project time, etc. It's possible with enough manpower. Uh, a lot of people think that if you have enough money and enough manpower, you can actually do it. But uh, I would, uh, I, I think the problem when you have a huge team is that you actually end up lacking flexibility. And I think it creates some bottlenecks, unfortunately. Because when your team is so huge, you have to go through so many channels for things to actually end up at the end line, if that makes any sense. Uh, because if you're a small team, you're flexible, you're agile, in the sense that you can actually um, go through decisions very fast. Too many people can slow it down as well, exactly. Many places it is I want to for the first time in my life. Yeah, you had mentioned that. Since in China as well as cities on the countries around the world, I talked to many travelers. What I felt when I talked to each traveler was... They dumb. Travelers are so cute. I'm wearing a mask and a hat. <laughs> One day I happened to meet a certain traveler in Xiangyang, Hubei province. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned that. He was riding in the same elevator and said, you're that way, Jay, right? Oh, God, just let me just recognize him, of course. We're the wrong people. 
my teammate tried hard to convince him lying and saying it's the wrong person, it's not that way, but... Maybe he found out after all and we talked to him for over two hours. Yeah. It was 100% not a coincidence. Uh, I agree with that. I, I don't think it was a coincidence. I, I really don't. Like, that thing went viral on Bilibili because people saw it. And they, it was posted in Bilibili. It had millions of views. I'm pretty sure it was not a coincidence. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's possible. Maybe they saw it. It was like, oh, that's really pretty silly. Uh, oh, what a coincidence. Oh, wow. We did a change. And it just happened at the time where the person had a bit of unlock. Insane. <laughs> He said about he and his girlfriend during Corona period, how they had playing Genshin together. Oh, that's cute. I listened to the story of him and Storia, that trip I heard many stories of travelers. For example, his son a travel star Genshin because a classmate from the same dormitory forced him to do it during the coronavirus. Classic. Pure pressure, hell yeah. I received a lot of love for Genshin and many opinions about Genshin from all the travelers. Now ask everyone what they left and what they couldn't come to Teyvat for a long time. Okay. The voice of travelers were a great encouragement to us. Even now, I think what they are doing with 5.0 is a response to Uwa, and if Uwa wasn't about uh, Adad, they would have done what they did. Silly Hoyo. Um, while I agree that I think... I don't know. I want to believe. Maybe I'm full copium, but I do believe they would have done changes. I think Water and Waves certainly exacerbated the issues. I, I think it, it was a aggravating factor that pushed them toward doing more changes uh, but we've seen from the past, even before Wu was there, uh, because even if it's from the same company, they still exist as form of competitors. And we've seen like Genshin Impact getting inspiration from, uh, you know, um, HSR, uh, for example. So I feel like it would have gone better. I think they were waiting for 5.0 to do a lot of changes. Uh, because, I mean, it's a big patch, it's uh, marketing-wise, it's a good time to get people to come back. And I think that's the best time to have massive changes, right? So, while I don't delude myself, and I think Water and Wave did play a big role, I think we would still have had some positive changes regardless, but maybe not as big. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Many meetings with the Genshin team. We achieved one common understanding. Genshin will always be friends with the travelers and will walk together. This is the only thing that will not change, but everything else can be changed. I just want to say from what I know, some of the guys was completely in charge of Genshin that way didn't really look into Genshin all that much. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I, I, I don't know. Uh, that way, he kind of goes from team to team and he helps out with a few things from what I know. So sometimes he's here, sometimes he's here for like the writing, sometimes he's here for some things. But like overall, I, I think he kind of like, he's kind of oversees a little bit of everything, right? So he, he does work there, um, just not on a maybe permanent basis. Uh, but, but I think he, he does take points uh, when necessary. You know, he's like, a, he's like the editor, right? So like people will go to him to make sure that things can be, can go through, you know? But yeah, there's obviously an amount of delegation, right? Game content, benefits, various improvements. Yep, there was a lot, honestly. For us, if travelers can have fun playing Genshin, everything can be changed. Because if all the travelers are not having fun, what is the meaning of all that we have done? So after talking with many travelers in the first half of this year, we also received a lot of encouragement. I have the courage and determination to keep going. Nice. The end of today's Natland preview program, 
I watched all the travelers from the corner of the Ojin seat. I still couldn't hold back and burst into tears. Oh man. This is my wish, starting today. Man cries a lot, true. Whether it's Nathan or from now on, I want to be with all the travelers, all the places in Teyvat and the Genshin team. Hell yeah. Same day, true. I cry all the time, dude. Sound is kind of cutting off and on. I think the recording is probably a bit messed up. I think there's still many lacking areas, even now things still haven't turned out exactly as the travelers wanted. Okay. But me and the Genshin team... After this past year of hesitation and anxiety, my wish is from today, from the time I leave this stage, I hope that the Genshin team and all the Genshin travelers will be able to take the burden of their past names and look forward. Okay. Mainstream? Yeah, Genshin certainly um, made gacha game way main way more mainstream in the West. The Genshin team wants to create the best experience for travelers with all their heart and soul. It's a lot of fluff, not that it's bad, but it's nice to see something a bit human. All travelers here now, blah blah blah. Let's all shout together. Yeah, the sound just went well down. All travelers, see you in Netland. Okay. Ah, cute. See you in that land! <laughs> <laughs> See <laughs> All right. Um, what do I think all of that? Um, to me, I, I think it's nice to I think it's nice to see him come, takes the stage, and just address the players directly. Uh, I think it's nice to kind of get a peek into their state of mind have them like acknowledge that there were some issues or that there are some issues and they're striving forward to like, you know, fix them, make them better, make the experience, experience overall better. And this is also on the back of having seen the live stream, right? So it's not a case of, okay, he's just talking, but now we need to see the result, right? We've seen the result and now it's kind of ex explaining how they went about to get there, essentially. And I think this is really nice. I think this is good stuff for the future, especially. Um, hopefully this is the start of a very good trend for Genshin Impact. Hopefully it means that we can expect more and more quality of life, more features that we want, like artifact loadout and stuff like that. Um, so this is great. I I'm looking forward to see what we can get. I'm looking forward to see if he's maybe going to take a bit more of a hands-on approach when it comes to Genshin Impact. Uh, ZZZ just came out, so I think he's probably been working on it a lot. HSR has been quite present, so maybe this is finally the time for him to, you know, take a step back from those other projects, go back to Genshin, and maybe pour a bit more time and um, and m more of his own, you know, time and e effort into Genshin specifically to try and make it so, you know, the, the community is satisfied, essentially. So I'm looking forward to that. So far, 5.0 sound amazing. I'm very excited about it. Regardless of what people think, whether if you think that the game is bad or anything, I like it, I will play it, and I like ZZZ, and I like all of those other games. I I'm a big gacha enjoyer, and I love the Hoyoverse games in general. I love the story building. Uh, it it's good shit for me. I like the storytelling as well. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, now, hopefully, this is something that will make it so... Well, people that have been disgruntled by those games... Uh, Maybe it will, uh, you know, give them something to sink sink their teeth into, as they say. Now we also know that, um, I mean, Hoyoverse is not stopping, right? There's going to be that uh, that kind of like slice of life, uh, you know, Animal Crossing kind of game. 
I think there's also supposed to be an MMO at some point. So there's still a lot of stuff coming out, but I hope it's not going to take away from, um, you know, from the other games and proper development, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think this was a nice interview. It's nice to, to see him really having taken the time to ponder all of this feedback uh, and backlash and, uh, you know, taking that as a way to, to transform it into a positive experience and positive changes. So I think this was nice. It, it, it's nice. I'm always happy to see that way because it, it does look passionate. Uh, even if it's a company, at the end of the day, it's about like making money. Uh, people in the company are human. And uh, I like the way. I'm partial. It is what it is. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought. Uh, drop a comment on the YouTube video if you're watching from there. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye!